Right now, NBC 26 live at 6. The Moose Lodge in Clintonville catches fire. We have an update from a community member. Plus, one Northeast Wisconsin community experiencing a power outage this morning. And a rare up close look at some of the Star Wars toys dating back to the original series. But first, to an NBC 26 follow up. A fire in Wapaka County leaves a charitable group without a home. It all happened last night in Clintonville. NBC 26's Max Grossville joins us live in the Green Bay newsroom with the latest. Max. Mo, a fire tore through Clintonville's Moose Lodge beginning at around 5.30 last night, according to Arthur Langoff, the lodge's governor. He says an issue in the kitchen started the fire. He says someone tried to put out the fire with a fire extinguisher, but when that didn't work, they called firefighters. Fire Langoff says fire departments were on scene for hours battling the blaze past midnight. He says first responders had to saw off portions of the roof just to start attacking the fire. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Oh, that makes me feel wonderful. I mean, I'm glad that nobody got hurt because we got a bar full of people. When that happened, you got, everybody got out safely. Langoff says he's also grateful to the firefighters who spent hours in the bitter cold to put out the fire. Firefighters from many of the surrounding communities came to help. Keeping you connected, live in the Green Bay Newsroom, Max Grossfeld, NBC 26. All right, Max, thank you. Now, some people in Ocana Falls community say there was no power for more than an hour today. The power is back on, though, and people say it happened before. They believe there was an issue with the transformer, and one lo local bar owner says they were caught by surprise when it happened, but they made the best of the situation. It was just a surprise, and it makes it all that much more fun in town when you have a bar and people come and want to see what's happening. The phone rings off the hook, like, do you have power? Do you have power? And nobody has power, so... And as of now, authorities have not confirmed what the actual cause of the outage was. Well, there's a rumor going on there's going to be a possible warm-up on the way, Gino. Is that true? That is true. We just have to go with just one more day of this cold temperatures. Now, winds are already changing out of the south, but the downside of that is because of these temperatures right now in the single digits and lower teens, we're seeing wind chills just below that zero degree mark. Now, where's that warm air coming from? It's coming in from the southwest. It's moving up to the northeast and won't be lasting for long. So let's enjoy it while we still can. It looks like the next three to five days. Then behind it, more cold air will sink farther southward. Also, some snowfall in the forecast. Your full forecast just ahead. All right, thank you so much, Gino. And covering America now, President Donald Trump says he's open to talking to North Korea's leader and hopes some good can come of it. The president made those comments today at a news conference at Camp David, where he's hosting Republican leaders about the year's agenda. On top of the immigration, President Trump says he's interested in signing legislation protecting hundreds of thousands of young people brought to this country illegally as kids. And that does include funding for the border wall. The president also defended his mental fitness after a new book came out this week portraying him as a leader who doesn't understand the presidency. I had a situation where I was a very excellent student, came out, made billions and billions of dollars, became one of the top business people, went to television and for 10 years was a tremendous success, as you probably have heard, uh, ran for president one time and won. Now, as far as that border wall does go, the Trump administration has released its master plan for getting it done. The total cost will be about $33 billion over a 10-year period. 18 of that will be needed for the wall itself. And according to documents, another 15 will be needed for technology, personnel, and readiness. The cost will be spread over the next decade. And just days after California legalized recreational marijuana, there are growing questions over whether federal authorities will be cracking down on it after Attorney General Jeff Sessions says pot sales are illegal nationwide. So what does that mean for pot shops? NBC's Gaddy Schwartz has a story. It's week one of legalized marijuana in California, and while sales have been nonstop, the excitement is through the roof. A decision by Attorney General Jeff Sessions is casting a haze over the future of pot. Here we are having this wonderful party and he wants to rain on our parade. Dina Browner is a co-owner of a local dispensary and the inspiration behind the hit show Weeds. We have so many people that have voted for this. It would be really sad to go against what they voted for. Session's decision rescinds an Obama-era memo that directed federal prosecutors to leave policing pot to the states unless it involved gangs, minors, or the sales across state lines. Sessions, an outspoken critic of marijuana, now taking these views on pot a step further. This drug is dangerous. You cannot play with it. It's not funny. It's not something to laugh about. Good people don't smoke marijuana. 
Sessions says pot is still illegal everywhere and they can enforce federal law wherever prosecutors want, sending shockwaves through a growing marijuana sector. Stocks in companies dealing with pot down, some in the double digits. Investors spooked by the possibility of raids on companies operating under state laws. Senators like Republican Cory Gardner blasting the decision. So this is a constitutional state's rights question, and so that's what makes this issue important. Our states were designed to be laboratories of democracy. But Sessions might be at odds with President Trump, who during his campaign said he wouldn't use federal laws to shut down state pot sales. I think it's up to the states, yeah. I'm a states person. I think it should be up to the states, absolutely. As for dispensaries like this one, Browner says the public has spoken, they aren't going back, and that sets the stage for a possible showdown between states and the federal government. He doesn't realize is that by shutting down legitimate businesses like we are in here, you're going to create the black market. And the Department of Justice is now expected to leave it up to federal prosecutors on what cases to take to the court. A fire had destroyed the home of a woman who accused U.S. Senate candidate Roy Moore of sexual misconduct. The blaze is under investigation for possible arson, but as of now, authorities say there is no indication the fire was intentional. It's too coincidental to me, but whatever they say, I'm, I'll go with. But, you know, right now I'm just so devastated that I, 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 I can't, I'm devastated. And a statement from investigators say they are speaking to a person of interest about this fire. NASA is saying goodbye to its first shuttle commander, John Young. The agency says the former astronaut died a year after complications from pneumonia on Friday. Young was one of the nation's most experienced astronauts who walked on the moon during the Apollo 16 mission all the way back in 1972. NASA also called him a pioneer whose career spanned three generations of space flight. Young was 87 years old. Comedy fans are mourning the loss of actor Jerry Van Dyke. His wife says the 86-year-old comedian died of heart failure in Arkansas Friday afternoon. Van Dyke was best known for playing the assistant coach on the hit series Coach. The show aired in the 1980s and 1990s. He also made appearances on Dick Van Dyke, a classic sitcom named after his older brother. Across the country, hospitals are being overwhelmed by a flu emergency sweeping the country. So far this flu season, close to 42,000 cases have been reported. Now, nearly three times more than last season have happened so far. Last year at this time, the outbreak was widespread in 12 states. This year, 46 total. We expect it to continue to rise because everyone's been home with their families and now the schools are reopened, children are together again, um, people are packing the workplace. And while the flu shot isn't always effective, doctors say if you have to catch the flu, if you do catch the flu rather, and have the shot, the symptoms may be less severe. On to covering the world now, Iranian State TV today showed pro-government rallies placing across the country. State TV described the rally as a response to the rioters and supporters of the riots. Anti-government protests broke out last week and have since spread to several cities and towns. The protests were sparked by a hike in food prices amid soaring unemployment in the nation. Some demonstrators have called for the government to be overthrown. And on to some state news now. A jury trial is scheduled for former Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark over some of his Facebook posts. Later this month, a jury will determine if the post aimed at a Milwaukee man named Dan Black started a threat. Black says he and Sheriff Clark argued on a flight last year. After the plane landed, Black and was detained for questions. When he filed a complaint back with the county, Black says the sheriff fought back with online post. And looking ahead to next week, road work is about to get started on I-94 frontage roads in Racine County for the Foxconn facility. Crews will be working between County KR and WIS 20 starting on Monday, and then Wednesday roads closures starts. A Milwaukee airman honored with his bravery in Afghanistan. Technical Sergeant Douglas Smith is being honored with the Purple Heart. On his second deployment, his team was struck with an IED. He helped his team members and kept on with the mission instead of being flown out. Recently, he was found out he has a traumatic brain injury. For me, I noticed some like short-term memory type stuff. I end up having to write things down a little bit more so mm -hmm. than I had to before then. And Smith is currently stationed at an airbase in Wyoming. And one lucky person in Florida is nearly half a billion dollars richer today. The winning ticket for the Mega Millions Friday night jackpot was sold at the 7-Eleven in the Tampa Bay area. The ticket is worth $450 million. That makes it the nation's 10th largest jackpot ever.
A lot of money indeed. Well, still ahead on NBC 26 Live at 6, high school students spent their Saturday morning battling out at a robots competition. But first, before that, what's the weather going to look like for the rest of the weekend? Your forecast up next. And now, your Storm Shield forecast from NBC 26. Well, more sunshine today, but also those temperatures were once again on that cool note. But if you're just sick and tired of all that cold air, guess what? We got some warmer air moving into the forecast. Also noticed uh, towards the end of that time lapse, some cloud cover was moving in. That's going to help keep those temperatures a little bit warmer tonight. But right now, dropping down into the single digits, it's currently 5 degrees in Green Bay, 6 in Acantos, 8 down in Sheboygan, and also in Fond du Lac, 8 degrees as well. Now, we got those winds coming in from the south, coming in at about 5 to 10 miles per hour for some of us. A couple others seeing some goose eggs, Shano, and even towards Mountain. But those winds out of the south, that's transporting that warmer air. However, because of how cold it is right now, we are seeing those wind chill values just a little bit below that zero degree mark. But nothing compared to what we saw just a couple days ago, where we were seeing minus 20, minus 30, even minus 40 degrees below zero. And we won't see any of that for the meantime. Warm air is heading in here just in from the Pacific Northwest moving in and that will keep us into the 30s and even perhaps 40 degrees and you'll see that in that 70 forecast. But right now what we're talking about is even a chance of some snowfall moving in from the west over my, uh, Minnesota right now just scattered very light moisture and we're not anticipating much besides a dusting to about a half inch of accumulation or so. Part of the reason we're seeing this is in conjunction with a high pressure that is bringing in moist air from the south and also a warm front coming in from the west from a low pressure that's way up into central Canada. Canada. So here's how we pan it out. This warm front passing through that's going to bring in some light snowfall overnight tonight. Now tomorrow might have a few passing flurries, but the rest of us should be staying nice and dry. However, a little bit of some cloudy skies. A high pressure will move in here by Monday. That'll erode the cloud cover, bring us some sunshine to kick off the new work week. But then this storm system right here, that's going to bring us those warm temperatures because a warm front will lift northward. We'll be in the warm sector and yes, rain instead of snowfall out of this system, at least the majority of it. As for tonight, here comes that light snowfall passing through. Temperatures dropping down near zero degrees, but that's slowly warming up because of that cloud cover acting as a thermal blanket. By 3 o'clock, a few light snow showers, temperatures hovering right around 10 degrees. That passes through continuously into the morning hours and by the afternoon pretty much all said and done. There shouldn't be much of a concern out on, out on the uh, roadways as temperatures rise up into the mid 30s and the road crews should have a pretty good handle on it, especially considering accumulations hardly a dusting to a half inch at most. So nothing to worry about and also any accumulation that does occur will be melting in the sh in short term future. For tonight, two degrees, light snow showers, the dusting to an inch. Southwest winds at about 10 to 20 miles per hour continuing at that pace tomorrow high of 26 degrees and then for the next few days take a look at that going with highs well into the 30s and how about that 40 degrees on Thursday but Mo see that overnight low temperature Thursday night six degrees yes and the bottom does drop down so enjoy the brief warm up as you can because Winter is certainly coming back soon. It's gotten to the point where we're cheering for 20s and 30s in that 140. I know. I mean, hey, at least that's a good time to take down those Christmas decorations sure. and then go right back inside and drink the hot coca. We can enjoy it for a short period of time, but the point is we can enjoy it. That's right. All right. Thanks so much, Gino. Well, still ahead, high school students spent their Saturday morning battling it out at a robotics competition. Plus, it's a blast from the past. Some of the original Star Wars toys here in Wisconsin. Check them out right after break. Welcome back. It was a battle of the robots in Nina today at St. Mary's Catholic High School. 32 teams from around the area competed for the top spots in a state competition. Four teams from St. Mary's VEX Robotics Program were in it. Team members and organizers say even though the goal is to win, it's all about the learning experience. Competitive robotics is all about STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And for these kids, it's about working together to solve problems. And for more information about the robotics program, just head to our website at NBC26.com and look for the story for more information on that. What well, was a blast from the past for Star Wars fans? The original Star Wars toys from the early movies were on display at the Gerald Van Hoof Library in Little Shoot, display called The Nostalgia Awakens. 
It features toys that were made from 1978 to 1985. The display will be going on during library hours until February 28th. And even though it's cold outside, there's still plenty of outdoor activities to enjoy in the area. At the Bay Beach Wildlife Sanctuary, dozens came out for the snowshoe hike. Organizers say it's a great way to observe nature. There was also the Bird of Prey Tour, where people can learn more about the birds the sanctuary has to offer. A lot of us are sitting inside wondering what's something that we can do that's quick and easy. You can come out here to the sanctuary, get outside for a little bit, get some fresh air, learn about our birds, and then come back in, warm up, and see some birds up close. And a night ski event will also take place on January 16th from 6 to 8 o'clock at night. And when we come back, the UWGB women's basketball team gets a boost from their local star. Plus, one former staffer is reportedly coming back to Green Bay. Chris Barrier has the latest Packers news after the break.